Recording in progress. There's the other. Okay, there we, there we are. Welcome back, everybody. You read the title. You know what we're doing. We are talking about Across the Spider-Verse. I'm joined again by uh, Sharon, as you see once again in the title. It says with it. Sharon Blady, and I am with Sharon Blady here. To, <laughs> well, I mean, over Zoom. We're both on <laughs> virtually, yet, yet yeah. continents apart. Uh, no, same continent, same continent. Same just continent, just, just a lot of miles slash kilometers in international border, you know. There we go. But, whatever, you know, those, whatever kilometers all, all are, those right? All those gaps get yeah. closed sort of philosophically and cinematically and, you know, <laughs> psychologically here. Both, yeah, we are in the North America verse. And uh, <laughs> speaking of verse, we should, uh, I'll say here, we are going to also go across the spoiler verse. Now, yes. I did think of that right before I hit record. So just it wasn't just right off the dome exactly, but it was minute it's only minutes old. And awesome. I'm sure none of the podcasts out there. First of all, is anyone really talking about this movie? And if they are, I'm sure no one thought of that joke. So yeah. tweet at me <laughs> if you did. Uh, or if the other shows you listened to did. This is uh pretty wild. There's a lot I, I often, before Ugh. we come to this, I go, oh, what's some of our themes going to be? And I have some ideas of themes that stand out in this that are pertinent, you know, to our purposes. But, uh, yeah. but man, there was a lot, though. There's a lot in there. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, for me, in some respects, it was um, that wonderful thing that can sometimes happen, you know, with, with a good second movie in a series where it's like the first one breaks new ground and it does a thing. And then the second one is where those where those things they, they get to sort of they've settled into them they found their flow their groove and then the flex gets bigger and so it was one of it was one of those movies where it's like oh my god it exceeded expectations on so many levels in all of the pl- in all of the places that I love about yes. what I loved about the first one like everything from the animation style to how they deal with various spider people yes. spider superheroes. And, and, and then dipping into some other places with how they did those characters and even how they did, well, one thing I would say is the, oh, look it, it's possible to do numerous characters well, which is not yes. exactly, which is not exactly a strong suit of the superhero genre that it's, it's, no, no. it's one of those things that films either do brilliantly or you're just like, oh, good Lord, you just barfed a whole bunch of characters into this blender and then, you know, hit pulse and it's a shit show. Pardon. Oops. Well, it's, it's, it's a disaster. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> yeah. it's the, one of those things though, that you see also used as an excuse too. Yeah. And I see it done really well when there's multiple movies. I know that mm. the, the Eternals, that was one of the critiques is that it didn't yeah. necessarily go well, but also one of the excuses people gave is like, well, there were like 10 characters and it's hard to do, but I think this demonstrates yeah, you can actually do that um, in well, one movie. In in many cases, uh-huh. although some of these are returning people, most of them are not. Uh, well, and that was the other part that was really interesting about it too was that 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 ability to, as a second movie, and again, this is where I think some of the other ones have failed. Where you get, and again, I even think of earlier, you know, the the early Sony, you know, Spy, Tobey Maguire era, where it's like you get this first movie and then you get the second one, and it kind of paralleled what happened with Keaton's Batman, right? You get, or you know, you, that whole thing, the one, the two, and then by the time you get to three, it's just this whole like they're just throwing stuff in there. None of the characters are getting developed, da, 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 right. whatever happens. And so, yeah, you, you just, you lose things and it becomes, everybody's trying to do everything to every, you know, be everything to everyone and being nothing to everyone instead. And this was really interesting because they were able to address the, you know, previous movie and, and some of the characters there, but they did it in a way where it's not like, okay, here they are. They're the first round of things. And then we're going to tag these other things on, nor are we going to ignore them. So there was just enough of a nod. They did it well without dragging it back or, and then again, integrating all of the new ones. But again, in that varying degree that you would have in, I guess it was that sort of, it was very natural. So in other words, you've moved on to this different phase of life. Yes, there are still people from the past that clearly factor in. And then here's all the new people that come in and in different ways. So some are much more direct and and here's an intense engagement. And then other ones literally pop in and out in the moment. But you get a sense of who they are sometimes in literally a line or two or a move or two. 
Absolutely. Very show instead of tell. And yeah. and I think, you know, when you see someone act specifically in and in you get that feeling of like, oh, yeah, that's how they'd act. It's like I've only seen them for a few seconds. But, but you know, you know that that's where there's thought behind what they're doing. I thought it was also something that proves that a, a multiverse being used in plots does not necessarily have to ruin everything. Uh, yeah. Because this gives... You, there, this is a very good use of that narratively, let's say, if you're looking at the storytelling. It's like, yeah. wow, really using it to tell uh, like individualized and, and personal stories, even though we've spread out through all these different options. And it's one thing that hit me in the first movie, but is way, you know, there's many, many more. There's like, mm. I, I can't remember, I read somewhere 200 or something different spider people that, that cross, yeah. not even people, the popsicles and cars. And mm. <laughs> it's both it's able to both capture a sense of uh, community, loneliness, and longing. Spider Man's always alone, mm. um, and going against that to say there's a community, but at the same time, you can also look at it as a fragmented sense of self. Here's yeah. all these different parts of me, even though they're not all like variants of the same mm. person. They are variants of the same superhero, right? Yeah. Well, I, and that's what I've always loved about. Uh, about the Spider-Man character, as you know, I use it to talk about anxiety, but I also use it, you know, Spider-Man being the gateway <laughs> on so many levels. Yeah. It's always that, you know, it's the thing that, you know, usually one of the first heroes that kids latch on to it, or, or that even if you're not into this kind of stuff, it's, you know, something that everybody's familiar with. Right. So, you know, again, launching a, a Spider-Man movie or a Batman movie seem to be like the two go-tos for two particular, you know, <laughs> universes. Um, or Superman or something, but it's, it's one of those, like everybody knows who Spider-Man Peter Parker. And so that first movie really broached that idea that, yeah, there's, there's similarity and differences. And that's again, one of the, the places that I use it is not just for that diagnosis, but that idea that two people with the same diagnosis, the same, you know, whatever can be uniquely different in how it plays out in their life. There's going to be similarities. There might be shared things, but even that your own, and again, going into family systems where, where you're located within your family and how you're, you know, Again, variations on the theme. So yes, they're all spiders, but, you know, and this one took it to that next level. And what I loved about that community part was, again, that and that idea that it's the, oh, so how much am I like this person? How, how much is what's their dominant thing or their known thing, um, you know, also part of me, but but differently? Why is it more, you know, again, their, again, their theme, their iteration than it is mine? And, you know, again, it's that little, it's the Venn diagram. How are all of these different circles overlapping and how much can I learn from this other person? And then what I loved in terms of that whole sense of community, it's like, yes, oh my God, here's this big, big, you know, peer group that literally, again, I think the other thing is the, the multiverse also gives us that sense of, it's like that, what if, what's that, you know, what if I had done this differently? What if I was in this circumstance? Oh, look at, here's somebody that is that, you know, so you get to see some of the other options and oh, well, that seems really interesting. And I'd love to, oh, wait a minute. That's how that plays out over here. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> and you, you really see that a lot more tarnish under that yeah. initial shiny object that, you know, the interesting thing too, is that much like, uh, We've talked on the program before about IFS or internal family systems, let's mm -hmm. say. So if we're looking at these different fragments within ourselves, like the the therapy approach with that would be these parts of us, right? And let's mm -hmm. look at all these these spider uh, spiders, uh, so if, if you will, spider heroes. They are at odds with each other at times, as we see the crux of the story. But yet at the same time, <clears throat> they are all attempting to be benevolent or beneficial you know there's not an evil one in there as far as we have seen really and even uh, i'm going to say even uh spider-man 2099 uh him, himself is even if he's doing evil actions he's motivated you know and i don't know that we know that it can be called that yet but yeah. he is doing so in what he believes is heroism which you know, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean he's not necessarily doing villainous things, but he's also well, somebody who saves people too. The right? the, the yeah. it's that whole the unintended consequences, right? Or the I get what you think you're doing, <laughs> and and I think I, I mean his character, and, and of course, I mean I love the fact that it's Oscar Isaac, so he just keeps showing up everywhere. Like he's he he's oh his gosh. own little yeah, he he's just, his own yeah. like sort of Marvel multiverse character, like. Right. <laughs> 
and awesome on a whole bunch of other levels. But sure. um, but that that character was really interesting because it also sort of reminded me again, thinking of this from that lived experience perspective, how even when we and whether it's and I would put him in the pure perspective rather than within the um, the clinical, but you could still see it where somebody decides to say, well okay, that's great, but, you know, we're all going off and let's, let's unify, let's do this, let's do that, and tries to sort of come up with, you know, just here, here on one level, yes, we're all different, but hold on, we have to have some sort of framework. And 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 it's interesting because, I you know, you do see that, as, you know, in, in certain um, contexts where there is someone trying to, shall we say, bring order and some sort of definitive understanding, this, that, or whatever, of a community of a, again, a peer group of around a diagnosis. And, and so that was kind of the thing that where it's, again, I get what you think you're doing, but at the same time, you realize how in some respects, again, oh, you realize, oh, this ties to your own baggage. Um, <laughs> so this is a you thing and I get it. So, but that's, so that's the other part of it is that sometimes those solutions that we try to come up with, you know, they might be within our own life, but then you go, oh, well, this worked for me. And then he doesn't, re- he, he's shooting on people. Yeah. He's, he's, he's shooting on people and, and in some respects working at cross purposes Mm -hmm. to the, the, the greater good and both in that sort of large against superhero way, but also the internal well being, the dynamics and, and that idea of hold on, how many of us have spent our whole life saying that we don't fit into the cookie cutter and now you're just trying to make a spidey cookie cutter. Like that's that's not the, right. that's not the improvement uh, that you think it is. Yeah, re- rebellion <laughs> as interpreted as uh, alternate uh, uh, adherence to something else, right? Adherence to a different system, not true, not really individualistic as as much as we might yeah. say. Which, of course, a couple ways that that's that that's demonstrated. One you mentioned when you say the the shooting, right? As we say, mm. you know, very dangerous words psychologically. We get into should, yeah, and especially when we apply shoulds to other people, and that's where you yeah. could say, now, it's not because we necessarily hate those people. In fact, oftentimes it can be because we like them very much, and we think this is what they need to do. A prescription oh. to others, particularly if it's something that's been either traumatic or a coping skill for us, Mm -hmm. once we start prescribing that outwardly, especially forcefully, it almost, it always leads somewhere bad. Well, and and this is it. And this is one of these things about that. It's it's that excellent example of when you ask people about that use of word and whether, again, whether it is, you know, an individual themselves and even how they might should upon themselves or how they might, again, in an effort to support peers. I mean, heck, we even just do it as parents, right? The proverbial, you know, how often do we want to spare our kids, um, you know, the pain that we went through? So we want to, you know, learn from my experience. Yeah, okay, but but how are you sharing it? So a lot of times it's it's about the, um, even the vehicle so that you might be well-intentioned, but are you saying, you know, something like, well, in light of what you're saying, I've gone through a parallel experience and this is what worked for me. You might want to consider it. Or as a parent, if I am, you know, in a, in an effort to prevent you from, you know, making the same mistakes, I'm going to share this with you do with it what you will. And, and so I think that's the other part of it is that he's, he does that thing where he crosses the line from I'm doing this for me. Um, I think it's worked or it's, it, it, I, I at least feel it's checking off the following boxes to this. Like you say, it's that, forceful prescriptive thing, which in some respects is no different from what those of us with diagnoses uh, or superpowers live with in the dominant society. And, and, and it's everything from the pull yourself up on your bootstraps. Well, doesn't blah, you know, doesn't insert name of whatever therapy they're, you know, externally familiar with work for you. Why don't you just X? And and so it's one of those like, dude, dude, you're not supposed to be doing this within the group. At the same time, you know where it comes from, because again, much like the parental thing, you're trying to share something with someone and be helpful. Delivery could, you know, use an upgrade. Well, <laughs> and it goes all the way, right? It goes all the way from just being like, I don't like that kind of movie, so you're not allowed to watch it, kid. Or yeah. setting a policy just because I think it's so, uh, you know, all the way up to abuse, right? There's abuse. There's con- mm-hmm. obviously abuse is about control and being like, and societally, even it goes to 
things that are very, very destructive and even deadly, right, to a lot of people. If we're, that's on the de- that's on the extreme side, obviously, mm-hmm. but but that is where this story does take it to where you know lives should be lost. And it's interesting to me for a couple of reasons. One is that it it kind of goes back to one of the key parts of uh, uh, not in game, but the one before Infinity. You know, it goes back to Infinity <laughs> War. The the where Captain America makes a big deal about uh, we don't trade lives, we don't trade a life mm-hmm. for a life, we don't make that decision. Whereas certainly there are people in the mentality is yeah, of course, of course we do, and we always do. And people missed when people pointed out that well, that's not always true in all the other movies and and this and that and exceptions. I think that maybe they missed the point that there is a struggle going on here. That's not you know let's apply this. It's not that. Um, you know, twenty ninety nine is right, and uh, you know, uh, Miles is wrong, or Miles is definitely right, and he's definitely wrong. That's that's one of the important things is that we don't really know, and Miles certainly doesn't really know. He found out an hour ago that this place exists, and then he's yeah, like, "No, exactly. I'm ready to risk it all on saving my dad." Well, and 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 that's the other part too is is that idea of you know. Twenty ninety nine is coming at him with this whole like, don't you understand the consequences of your actions? And you're like, dude, dude, again, like, you know, <laughs> can we look in the mirror first? <laughs> you know, not saying that you're not allowed to like, you know, point out some things and let you know. I, again, I always want to know if somebody can politely point out to me where the you know my intentions versus my impact are are different. They didn't align the way I thought they would. There was the unforeseen consequences. The you know. We all know how the road to hell gets paved kind of thing, you know, <laughs> solid gold, well intentions. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, it's that kind of thing where it's like you, if you're willing to have, you know, that kind of perspective, the, again, openness to it going the other way and, and a self-awareness. Now, it doesn't mean you sit there and navel gaze on the consequences of every, you know, single motion in your daily life and then become paralyzed by, you know, the, the overthinking and the navel gazing that can definitely come from, from, you know, certain situations, especially if you're, you know, in a recovery mode. Um, But that idea that I, and and what I loved how they used it, because it also ties into the larger, I I would say the fandom issue is um, talking about a canon moment. You can't change this because yeah. according to the algorithms, this is a canon moment. And it was one of those things where it was like, okay, so again, somebody's run this through the thing. And I and I see like the, again little bits of nods back to to Kevin and She Hulk and these and, and and other things where yes. people will get into debates about the transition of characters from the page onto the screen and what is or isn't canon, all and these other kinds more? of things. And this notion of what canon <laughs> is. And you're yes. like so much of this is there's a there's a, a flexibility, but also who gets to decide what's canon? And and and, and this, so it, it was another marker of that policing or gatekeeping. And so you're like, oh, so according to this, certain kinds of pain and suffering and outcomes are inherently canon. So you're just going to have to suck up that, that you know, your dad's going to die. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, these other things, well, those are bad things that you let loose and, and you're the cause of. And you're like, well, well, wait a second. And again, the fact that you said that, well, this is algorithms and we've done this and we've done that. So again, the so you're deciding which pain is appropriate. So again, and I think to those things where it's like, you know, again, you get these, these different things that are meant to be psychologically helpful, where it's, you know, everything from, well, everything happens for a reason, or, you know, God meant that for us to happen, or just accept, da, 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 you, there's certain things you've got to accept. And you're like, well, oh, wait a second here. Again, this is like, this is you telling me how to feel, how to process, how to intellectualize appreciate your insight on one level, but you don't get to be like the gatekeeper or the police here. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there's that feeling, you see this a lot in different processes, whether it's recovery, uh, whether it's, you know, dealing with major life changes and things. And it's exactly the same as we're saying, like, here's the prescription. This all happens for a reason. And yeah. you mentioned that Venn diagram of what are the similarities. And one of them that's just about universal with this particular crowd uh, is trauma. Mm-hmm. And are we, you know, then you're left with the thing of like, okay, I'm tra- no doubt there's trying to pre- have prevention of trauma. And, you know, one person versus a whole universe, obviously, that math's not that hard. If, mm-hmm. you be- if it's true, 
right? That's the problem, proactively coming in and assuming that I'm going to apply what worked for me and anybody else's plan, anyone else's coping, anyone else's recovery, anyone else's path is probably wrong unless it looks a lot mm. like mine, right? And and people can get into that so radically, right? Well, to say and this we're is stuck and this is the outcome and it's got to be this or this. If I if I survived and grew by trauma, you have to too, is what we're looking well, at here. Exactly, and and that ironically, again, in the I get what you think you're doing vein, that very behavior can in fact be traumatizing in itself. Yes. So that's 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 the whole. So I get it. You don't want me to, you know, die. You know, I, again, I, I grew up in a family where, for example, motorcycles were an issue, and it was the whole. You know, I had I had a friend whose dad was an emergency doctor who referred to them as donor cycles. <laughs> oh, so needless to say, there was a certain, shall we say, thing going that way, and it was like the whole. Okay, but you know what? If you put me too much in a particular kind of bubble, first of all, psychologically, in terms of how you're doing it and enforcing it, and again, I I have family members. Again, we're, I come from a family where there's a lot of self medication, and and it's interesting watching the approaches because it ranges everything from the denial and yes, I can have a few drinks, and then it's the you know you see what happens. Um, or the folks where it's like, no, 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 I found my recovery. And as a result, nobody's allowed to consume any alcohol at any of our family gatherings at dinner because da, 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 da. And, and then it's like yeah. this weird, like, hmm, that's this. These are all still you problems. <laughs> and now you're imposing your stuff on me because of your hmm. that's again, that's not what you think it is. And I'm glad that you have found that and you've done this and you've done that. But my ability to have a glass of red wine with this really nice steak is not your business, you know, yes. <laughs> and 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 that if you're forcing me to do that, and I've got to endure X number of family gatherings. Now, I'm not saying that you know five years of Christmases like that is going to put me in therapy, but it's also <laughs> not a healthy behavior, and and again goes into issues around boundaries and and other things that can over the long term. Again, you grow up in a household where, you know, I found my sobriety three years before you were born. And so therefore, da, 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 da. As a result, there's going to be no exposure to alcohol. <clears throat> Depending on what the context is, I just sit there and I view that situation going, well, I see a child now that um, because this is a taboo is more likely than a lot of their peers <laughs> to go, um, you know, break the taboo experiment. And God knows what's going to happen, whether it's binge drinking or potentially repeating that, you know, self-medication cycle or some other kind of thing where it's like, you know, when you're on either end of a particular spectrum, sometimes it's not the, you know, that sweet spot in the middle moderation insight, or at least giving somebody, you know, again, that how, how is it being put out there? Yeah. Here's a thing that I have learned. This is how it's benefited me and why, and these are maybe the circumstances Add it to your, batch of information and do with it what you will as it suits you. And it's big, a part of how we approach any kind of solutions. And I'll say, you know, in the treatment industry, there's one of the realities that I often talk about individualization and the lack of that. And um, Mm. as I heard a long time ago, and I've quoted this many times on the show, do we design uh, programs to, work well for the program or do we try to make programs work well for the people in the program program are we meeting yeah. their needs or are we making the program run and and anytime you have a blanket policy it's really not any different i mean maybe a little less insidious but obviously but it's no no different than having a blanket attitude about a group of people they're all this way you yeah. know and it's like it's really the same dynamic of saying like everybody needs to go through this everyone needs to experience this and to prescribe growth through trauma, obviously in a much more extreme life or death way in the context of a comic book superhero world. But, but then, but again, parallels reality, right? Think about how many, like think about hazing rituals in, in sports and fraternities and all of these other things. And that, or, or, or even just other things where people, a law will come in or something else. And somebody will say, but I survived through X and I've turned out just fine. And you're like, ah, okay. (laughs) You're uttering that phrase demonstrates just how yeah. not fine you are. <laughs> well, it's funny, you know, take it into a, this is a little bit less of a comic booky fran- uh, uh, property, but 
uh, you know, think of a few good men, right? The whole mm. reason for that story, for anyone who's seen it, is really a sort of morality, playing with the morality of being in a system. That system is a hard edged, hard ass system, and everybody needs to be tough and strong. But the ways that we enforce that killed somebody. And so, how are mm. we supposed to feel about that? And the message of it is it's complicated. I mean, you know, it is very complicated. At the same time, certain things are kind of cut and dried and, and doing harm versus not, you know, and it, so engaging with solutions in a much more nuanced way of seeing yeah. the individual. And that's where, for me, that's where Hobie comes in, right? Spider punk. Oh my God, I love Hobie. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have two Hobies that I love, you know, this one and the one from BTS, and they're both by sort of rays of <laughs> sunshine. True, one true. is more of the softer version, and the other one is like the, you know, bug, my punk roots. But go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, yes. No, you're good. You're good. My fact, favorite. <laughs> it highlights, it highlights actually what I was going to say. Hobie to me represents which is nuance, individualization. And I'm going to use this, I've been using this word a lot lately when talking to people, especially about addiction. There's a concept that floats around out there that, you know, we never get better until we're super uncomfortable. And uh, a concept I'm not a big fan of is the concept of hitting rock bottom. Ah, bottom, yes. Because, oh my God. Yeah. Talk about an overworked trope. Yes, yes. And I think that's the biggest part is it gets to the point where some of these things have no meaning. And they're also so subjective, and I don't begrudge anyone who, and nobody out there, I don't want to say, like, anybody out there using it, whatever. I mean, if it's pertinent to your life, it's pertinent to your life. But from a clinical perspective, I like to use the word interruption. Any kind of unhealthy process, whether it's addiction or being stuck into, you know, depressive thought processes or things, what we need is an interruption. It doesn't always have to be decimating our quality of life completely, yes. right? But to have an interruption in the way we're going and you could totally see where, you know, there's these components, too, for, for Miles, where he's being told, like, not only you have to do this. And we'll probably get into this one a little bit more when we're done with Hobie, but you're not supposed to be. You're not even supposed to be here, right? Mm -hmm. It's all a big, mm -hmm. you know, accident that you're here, which we'll, we'll get into maybe the ramifications that that, that has for him. Well, individually. And, and, and that but, notion that someone is somehow an accident. Like, again, there's yes. all the, the layers there. Like, right. really? Again, in terms of the the, the policing, shooting, defining, yes. and my my and and you know you get to the right to say this based on what? Yes, <laughs> and that's my my favorite thing. There is when, uh, you know, Hobie has already kind of teased him about. Here's how you break a force shield, dude, and then he's yeah. just kind of like. Those who can see the video, I'm kind of going like you with my hands, like, hey, yeah. remember, remember how to do yeah. this, and I didn't realize this watching it, and of course, part of it. You know, I pick up the vibe, but they actually, uh, you know, Hobie in in certain scenes that he's in is a little bit of a jarring difference in animation yeah. style. And one mm -hmm. of the things they did is they changed the frames per second speed so that oh, that's how they did it. Okay, yeah, different parts of him and even his guitar, they were like different parts of him were moving at different speeds because he's a rebel, he's ah. individual, he's mm -hmm. and you get that jarring, just a little bit disquieting, even feeling of just like, well, he doesn't, what's he do? What's he do? You know, what's he doing yeah. here? And well, he's a little different, and he catches your attention that way. And the other thing I didn't realize that I I had to you know somebody was saying was. I did notice. I noticed that when he was walking through the headquarters, he was stealing things. Um, <laughs> but he, all of the things he took were things that later were part of the dimensional wristband that he made for himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he wasn't just ripping things a, a off. More was, a a like, more yeah. subtle, subversive, you know, rocket. And I need a little bit of this. Yeah, and can yeah. Get one of those, and I'm just gonna, you know. Didn't go and grab anybody's leg or eyeball or anything like that, but still was like acquiring things. Yes. Well, and I think that was one of the things that I loved about that character. And I mean, obviously he was, you know, put opposite 2099 in a couple of, of things, but in, in some respects kind of represented a, a, what I would call like, a, I don't know, some core, some motivational or some like just, just some things there where you're like, yeah, I mean, these folks, again, are all outliers. And now he's like the outlier to the outliers, so to speak. And in the same way that, again, superheroes and in this case, you know, the various spiders challenge the status quo and what's going on with the status quo in broader society towards a larger sense. Because there, there's always some element of like systemic justice that they're addressing. Um, and so 
he was this story's version of that. He was he was the Spider-Man to the Spider-Man kind of thing. You know? Yes, right. How <laughs> he was Spider-Man. the one going, again, this isn't what you think it is, or wait a second, why are you doing? So in the same way that we've been used to seeing, you know, Peter questioning something or Miles or Gwen or, again, so, and there's always been some sort of questioning element, but they did, you know, Hobie did that to this universe and was, I would, and I would argue was the one that, you know, demonstrated that you can inadvertently end up having some sort of larger group think and someone, whatever, and that it's okay to, you know, <laughs> you guys over here were, you know, that, so that idea of, of retaining his identity and yeah, now I'm fighting another status quo, but it's an internal one and I'm an outlier within my own group. And so I was like, great, I get to be doubly villainized <laughs> in some <laughs> respects. It's interesting. And dismissed and challenged. And and you yeah. see, and I and I found that interesting because as someone and I and I've recognized this, you know, in very I think a lot of us, you know, at some point most of us feel like some sort of an outsider. Those of us who are neurodivergent have mental health issues feel it, I think, a little bit more differently, can't off, often deal with it. But also being involved, well, especially in the political realm where there's, you know, any place where there's a notion of insider and outsider, and then that idea of, again, that kind of gatekeeping being let in, and then it's like, great, well, you've been let into the thing, and then it's, it, you know, and here's your Kool-Aid jug. Um, <laughs> and and their red-blue Kool-Aid here is, you know, again, not the Lawrence Fishburne type of, of another franchise, but it's, it's still that notion of, you know, you go in and you're supposed to now drink this group's Kool-Aid. And and if what happens if you, you know, take a sip or put and put the glass down or don't take a sip and just operate within there. And so that I think that was one of the things that I loved. And I mean, it makes sense, you know, as a punk. I mean, punks are all about, you know, in, in the truest sense are all about social justice. So, yeah. So, like, you know, the person raised right. on you know, Joe Strummer and um, <laughs> Henry Rollins was well, like, I was there for Even to the it. point, I know, and it is like, when, what is he like? Oh, I don't believe in comedy. Uh, yeah. You know, there's that, you know, little bit of the, that thing that even makes people who are, can even make people who are trying to be uh, whatever, uh, social advocacy, whatever, be like, oh, really? You're a bit much. Yeah. And I think that's interesting because when you're fighting uh, for something, uh, or, you know, are you fighting for something or are you fighting against something? Mm-hmm. And this is actually a thing that is discussed a lot in circles with advocacy is, you know, I, I when I was doing a lot with like a local uh, domestic violence council and I was going uh, – and you know, I've been to the, the, the uh, child abuse conference here where I live. That's once – I've been to that a few times and, mm-hmm. and domestic violence conference. Heavy, pretty, pretty heavy conference oh, by yeah. the way. But uh, that's something that is talked about a lot in these advocacy circles, even something as insidious as violence. The, they go back and forth on, are we an organization that targets the eradication of violence? Or are we an organization that attempts to replace violence with the following? And that informs our programming in a certain way. Do we just mm-hmm. talk yeah, about Yeah, we're not going go to go to solve the or, core problem. We're just going to run around with the do, bandages. Yeah, exactly. How do we – you know, it's kind of like, so do we fight for – the whatever we want instead of violence or do we fight against violence and it's like it's not that there's not a balance there's both right that are important um, but it's kind of like what's my primary mission you know and how do I break that down and I feel like when you're fighting for something it's almost always more nuanced it's like we're trying mm. to do something rather than we're trying to end something uh, you know sometimes the end something leads to those blanket policies let me put it that well, way well you know? and this is the other part too and we definitely see it in terms of you know on one level i'm grateful for sort of for the again increased conversation and the fact that the more again the openness or increased openness around discussing mental health neurodivergence the fact that we're not all the same the fact that you know even our broadening understanding of trauma where it's not all just about a first soldiers that have you know and veterans you know second first responders uh, third, you know, victims of some of domestic violence or some other kind of violence. And then the, the notion of like microaggressions or other kinds of, you know, the, the proverbial death by a thousand cuts kind of thing, you know, that's still not on the radar. So you, you, there's progress, but it's come at a certain price and a certain amount of that has been um, the corporatization, but also exactly what you're talking about where it, you know, there's an industry of sorts. And so it's the, you know, do we want to do the preventative work? Are, are 
I, that whole fighting for something. Are you looking to eventually put yourself out of a job? Yes. By doing this, or are you looking to establish an industry? And, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, um, I, I wonder about somebody's motivation um, or how they're op- like, and you say, are we designing a program for the individuals? Or are we designing it? And it's like, again, it's one thing to, and I look at it from that health, again, from a healthcare model of, you know what, you can't stop operating the emergency room and doing, you know, the, the care that's provided there for people that are injured. But can we also go and take a look at how these people are getting injured and stop doing that so that, you know, and again, we've seen it in everything like seatbelt laws, you know, for example, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's a great example of, you know, okay, we, we put those in, it's not stopping car accidents, right. but it's changed the statistics on these things and certain kinds of things. And what is interesting and not saying that there aren't pushbacks when certain things like that happen, but you'll see a greater acceptance or a greater move towards, of course, we need seatbelts, something really obvious like that. But at the same time, try to get a corporate culture or a school culture or a religious culture to stop doing things that provide, you know, basically a rich field of traumatic growth for a whole bunch of people. Um, And I mean, we're seeing it here in terms of legislation um, in, in regarding like, you know, the, the broader LGBTQ and especially with the impact on the trans community, but it, it ripples down where you're watching all, all of this progress on things that have inherently been tied to the systemic, you know, othering and traumatizing of folks. And we're watching that all get undone. And you're like, well, you know, if you're going to talk to me about wanting to, you know, improve mental health and reduce suicide numbers, you, if you're not looking after the queer community and you're letting this kind of stuff slide, hmm. Broader, so you, you, you know, a, a legislator doesn't get to talk, you know, out of one side of their mouth about, you know, wanting a, a healthier culture while then turning around and undoing healing legislation and doubling down on things that are just like a hotbed of, you know, systemic trauma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you can't yeah. be watering both gardens, dude, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, unless- so like that was that was part of what I saw there was that, again, yeah. that was the kind of thing that I saw. Spider punk, you know, seeing Hobie stand up to were those kinds of things. And that sometimes we do need that. And that sometimes, again, it gets it gets othered and it gets seen as, again, here's the hey, as somebody that's had multicolor, you know, various colors of hair over my lifetime. But, you know, you put pink back in your hair at 40 and people look at you like there's a problem. And it's like, <laughs> are you going through? Really? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really, really. Like, you know what? OK, I get I, the reason why I had colors in my hair at 17 was maybe a little bit different uh, than it is now. But at the same time, you know, my the, the the pigment of my hair, whether it's natural or from a, a bottle, what shade it is. Has, none of these things have any relevance to, you know, my intellectual, academic, political, mental, like all, all of my abilities to function. And, and so this is, this is your judgment issue. And I think that was one of the things that I saw was that, that idea that we saw different kinds of judgment coming from different characters and the impact. So you saw it in the different spiders in terms of, and, and their, and their families and whatever there were and, and, and how much of it was them internalizing judgments that were being foisted upon them and then within that other community and 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 Hobie kind of being that you know the litmus test or the you know the external yeah the guy watching the horror movie going don't go around that corner that's where the axe murderer is you know he was in some respects he was that that voice or that perspective but you saw how it got him treated and how and how it got him you know Nobody likes the person that says the emperor has no clothes, right? Well, and yeah, and and he's also right the perfect one to have empathy, especially if he knew, it seems like everybody knew except Miles that yeah. <laughs> part of the lore the is that a canon event was already thrown off because, you know, not only should Miles, you know, not the version of you shouldn't be in this. Mm -hmm. He's like, you shouldn't be Spider-Man. In fact, what do we find out, right, is the sort of like the canon is you're becoming the Prowler. I mean, that's the whole thing. When he goes to the universe where the spider was supposed to go, if if a universe doesn't have a Miles, if it has a Miles, he's Spider-Man or he's the Prowler is what it seems like, right? Yeah. And, And I'm sure, by the way, speaking of... Using the art, which this is uh, using the art for emotionality is awesome in this. Mm. I'm sure everyone's seen the video reel by now that the the colors, the prowler colors being behind Miles, 
And in the first movie, you, I mean, I'm sure you've seen this, yeah. right? You know, of when uh, when he's bitten and Spider Man meets him and says, "You're like me." His background colors change from prowler to red and blue, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. So even in the first movie, they yeah, were these, these little doing this. artistic nods right. that are little threads that get woven through, yes. yeah, which is awesome. I mean, don't even yeah. get me started on like Gwen Stacy and her house being almost an oil painting of like, <gasps> oh my god, hues, well, I, and how they warm. would do it, yeah. <laughs> and how, and how you would see it even evolve in terms of like it, during the course of a conversation and 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 that how that could be done either in just yes. the evolution of it through the like so in other words the framing stays the same and you just watch and it's and it's done through something like oh the lighting change here's the sun moving around or a, an angle change and you're just like oh my god the layers the layers the layers like the there's part of me that again this is the eclectic academic background, the art historian in me, <laughs> my degree, it just loves these films because, and, and again, this goes to that larger conversation that a lot of people have around comics and animation right. and whether they are legit and whether they are, you know, oh, I, I'd rather see an action, you know, a live action version than a animated thing because animation equals kids. And I'm like, no, 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 these are, this is a bunch of people that I can tell you have like phenomenal backgrounds in art history. And the fact that they are like, the, the, oh my God, the initial vulture coming in. <laughs> oh yeah, the Italian. And the whole Leonardo vulture. thing. Holy cow. Like, that yeah. was like, the, this This is not me projecting something. Right. And, and you know, dragging in my personal background. It's like, no, no, they, 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 they it's, it's laid out and not just in like a wink or a nod. It's like X number of minutes that you're just like, oh, only Leonardo da Vinci here. Like yes. just awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you see where that's used and you got this uh well, and this is what what Miles eventually books, you know, is it's like um here's the which okay, and so I want to run this by everybody out there. If trauma is necessary, right? And that's the real question they're throwing here is trauma is necessary, and by the way, you already shouldn't be here. So now you have almost this toll you have to pay of like your dad dying. The interesting oh. thing to me. If we're going to assert, once again, self, you know, prescribing to others, there's a purpose, there's a reason for your suffering, and here's what it is, by the way. Yeah. And look at look at uh, the alternate place where he winds up, and Miles is the prowler. His dad died in that universe. Well, ex- exactly. Right? Like this, this, this right? again, it goes yeah. to that weird gatekeeping thing where, or, or, or in a sense, you know, like, again, like the hazing ritual. Oh, you're not totally, you know, in the club. You're not supposed to be here. How dare you have spider powers? Because, you know, again, to use a hazing thing, we haven't beat you with hockey sticks for half an hour and right, made you, right. you, so, you know, you're, and you're how, not dare allowed, you how, how dare you have been recruited to, onto yes. the team and allowed to play a game? How dare the coach put you on the ice before we beat the crap out of you first? No, no, that's not. <laughs> again. If that's your thought process, if that's your rationale, you are the problem, not the solution. <laughs> and and your credibility with me has just gone down a notch. Well, and that's where I loved how the, the again they use because again in terms of like movie MacGuffins and whatnot, the fact that they used this is a canon event, so they played right into the notion of. I mean, it was it was almost like a fourth wall thing in a way. Of, you know, oh, this is a comic and we're all superheroes. And so therefore the following things are canon. Um, and, you know, and, and I, that was, like I said, that was a, a real lean in on a, in on a broader issue of canon. But like you say, that idea of like, how dare you be a superhero if you haven't had trauma first? Yeah. And the reversal of canon came up. I mean, if you think about the first movie where that was the whole deal, the Kingpin was messing with this to try to get mm. his- family back and trying to undo essentially what he had done, obviously, is he he's yeah. the one who created the situation. Um and so we see that it's interesting, and this is my read on on Miles looking at the situation, and then there's the interruption, like Hobie, you know, that we all mm-hmm. need if we're heading in a direction. There's either it's external or internal. There's some something that interrupts the process, right? Yeah. And then and this is great imagery for the psychological routine breaking, right? I'm stuck in this rut. I'm unhealthy. It's going a certain way. It's destructive. Boy, the ultimate way for this to go is very tragic and scary. And then he literally breaks the pattern, messes with the whole system, and literally leaps. They did great things with his leap in the first movie. But mm-hmm. his leap, which was great because he's like, who do you think you are? You can't do anything. And he's like, well, I did distract you all from where I wanted to go back to or whatever. Yeah. I, I did get all of you out yeah. of here, uh, 
this was a, this was a plan. And so if you look at it in these stages of change, right? There's the preparatory stage. There's the, you know, and so he leaps literally into this action stage to say, I don't know where, I don't know exactly where this is going to go. Right. Do I, do I know that doing something new is going to 100% like fix things and be healthy or am I taking a chance? Mm-hmm. Right. And well, that I, level I, of confidence and is really how, cause he didn't know any more than uh, the real, the other guy really knows what he pretends to. Yeah. Well, and, and that, and that these kinds of things, they come with an inherent risk and that, yes, obviously through life, we all go around, you know, you, you, you try to mitigate risk to a certain degree. But but it's uh, you know what's your cost benefit analysis? What's your the, what's the actual scale of the risk? So yeah, you know what I'm 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 not likely to go bungee jumping while juggling knives uh, in my lifetime. <laughs> At the same time, if you take that risk averse behavior, you're going to end up like you know living you know with, without ever leaving your house and wrapped in eight inches of bubble wrap, you know. <laughs> Yes. So if you take every if, if you follow everything through to its logical consequence, supposedly, and logical being, you know, big, big air quotes, more of like the, OK, you've gone 37 steps down the decision tree into the world of war. Um, and, and so, yeah, there's, a, you know, you, again, not saying you should only do one or two steps on a decision tree. But sometimes if you've if you've made it that far down, you've you've lost all sight of reality. And I think that's one of those things that plays in there as well. And well, and also, again, going back to that idea of the gatekeeping and the shooting. Yes, I'm not going to claim that, you know, Miles's life is perfect. And but at the same time, who's to judge what is or isn't trauma and what is or isn't that supposed mark that, you know, Really? So we all have to have some sort of family member or members die in the following kind of whatever. Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and, it's so, to force so, and I think that even goes to, to that home. diagnostic thing. Well, oh, and, and you see it especially. And again, I'm going to get into a place that I'm sure a lot of folks have opinions about. But we've watched um, Prince Henry come forward and talk about his mental health and go forward and do certain things and have people judge him in a way where it's like, Oh, but he's rich, famous, this, that blah, 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 blah. How dare he. And you're like, I'm sorry. Like when I read his book, I sat there going, Oh, good Lord. Like, again, like the, you could spend weeks, hours, whatever, again, whether it's internal family systems, it's the, 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 the layers here. You're like, Oh my God, yeah. what coupled with that thing that people, yes, there's privilege, but do you realize that some of that privilege is actually in fact, contributing to his trauma because that privilege basically says we've got a family that is not only again well ensconced in in some very posh locations on the british isles but clearly must own again prime real estate in downtown cairo well ensconced on denial um and so it and so a certain amount of his you know so again i'm not dismissing the advantages that he has and he doesn't dismiss them either but he also acknowledges where they contribute to the dysfunction and the trauma that he's suffered and, and how those systems impacted both his parents and his grandparents because of the pressures put on them. So yes, there's all of this privilege, but you know, as a result, grannies turned out this way, which meant that dad turned out this way. And then they, you know, and then because of that dysfunction and the larger systemic yada, 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 whatever, that meant my mom was brought into the equation when clearly there was somebody else there. And then it's just like the whole, again, you're like, these 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 dominoes and these things that we've talked about, but a whole bunch of people judged him. And it was that same kind of thing that you see here where it's the, well, okay, that's fine. You may have had, you know, da, 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 but is that really the canon event? Mm-hmm. You know, you're, 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 you know, in the same way, Miles is the, you know, well, you haven't had da, 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 da happen. Well, I'm oh, sorry. You, 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 sorry, you're, you're too well off to have this happen. You're too, or again, what he's dealing with in public and trying to determine what his boundaries are. People saying, well, you don't get to have privacy mm-hmm. if you're going around and doing this other thing. And you're like, it's, you know, it really. It, and, and so that's where I see this kind of thing where, yeah, in some respects, yeah. a lot of these things parallel these larger dynamics. And that's, again, what I love about comics and about superheroes and, and about anything that's in that sci fi fantasy thing is that they do deal with really complex issues. But they put it in that palatable way and in that way that you go, oh, well, it's about this character and that character and how they did this. And then you're like, ah, big, huge parallels and other things. And, okay, I'm again, I'm not saying that these folks, yeah, fine, they brought in Leonardo da Vinci because of somebody maybe 
somebody's fine arts degree and yada, yada, yada with Vulture. I'm not saying somebody sat down there and, you know, and said, well, I've got to, I got to work Prince Henry and Harry in here, you know, um, (laughs) directly. But the point is is that you see that if a story is done well enough, you can find those parallels and, and see the metaphors. And, and, and again, yes, it might be projecting in or out, but it helps give us those spaces to again, learn, understand individuals tap into compassion and do that thing where you can say, yeah, here are this wealth of programs, tools, resources, da, 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 da. It's a rich toolkit. Mm-hmm. The following tools worked well for me and I'm going to offer them to you. And you know what? I'll even share some other ones with you. Figure out what works for you. I might be a hammer and reciprocating saw person in this for most of my life, but you might be a, you know, a jackhammer and a power drill person, or maybe just an old fashioned, like, you know, garden hacksaw or something to take the, you know, to prune the, you know, yeah. the wayward branches. But the point is, is that, you know, and, and maybe you might even find that, and this is what I found that I've had different, you know, therapeutic tools and perspectives that didn't fit me at a particular time maybe because of where I was, how I was, deli- it, it was delivered to me. And in some cases I had to kind of come overcome that. It doesn't work for me bias. And at a later point went, Oh my God, I'm so glad it's in my toolkit. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad I overcame whatever. And I think that's, again, that's the kinds of things that we're seeing in here is the, yeah, they're all different spiders, the Venn diagram circled it, but you know, gee, one person naturally has, you know, the web's coming out of their wrist. Other people use chemically, you know, derived ones. They've all got similar nods to their, you know, it, within their costuming or how they look. But, you know, Spider-Man Noir doesn't have to have bright colors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's... You know, Patir doesn't principle. have to have shoes on. Uh, yes. Um, and he can all give us... A, well, and then, and again, in terms of the larger serious issues and, and larger socio-political things. And this is where the British put all their stolen yes. stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and well, chai that- tea. This um, is the, the chai chai. You're right, right. It's like saying chi chi. <laughs> Perfect. And that ties yeah. in with this idea from therapy. There's the idea of when you see someone come into therapy, do you treat the client or the patient or whatever you want to call them? Um, some of those uh, have a power differential expectation historically of that mm-hmm. relationship. And do you treat the client as the expert of their own situation? That's a whole principle. Yeah. It comes from different different modalities of therapy. Which is mm-hmm. to say, yeah, the therapist that you're coming to see, yeah, they have some expertise, but they should respect your expertise as the expert of you. And Miles yeah. is not respected as the expert of him, which no. it's interesting socioculturally coming from, uh, you know, he's in another dimension from us, I guess. But it's a, it seems to be a pretty similar uh, social order in many ways. He's, he's black and Puerto Rican. There's already a mm-hmm. lot of forces in the world that are like you really shouldn't. You really shouldn't be. You know? Exactly. So yeah. Exactly. There. As as a black Puerto Rican youth in America, how often is he considered an expert on his lived experience? Right. By and, again, the powers that be, the the folks making laws, the people running education systems, etc. Yeah, and even <laughs> you know, it's funny because in real life, a critique that I've seen a few people have is he has that speech that he gives to his mom. When he's in the, it turns out, of course, big, the biggest spoiler of the movie, as I warned up front, the spoiler verse takes us to this, uh, is that he's in the wrong dimension. It's the wrong his mom. But he mm-hmm. gives the speech to her about how you were right. I do belong. I was here. I beat everybody who was trying to stop me. And I've heard people say, I read it online where people are like, uh, yeah, I was kind of cocky. I don't know about that. It was kind of cocky. And it's like, so you're judging, you're doing exactly the thing. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're sort of like poking fun at that anyway with canon events to say, here's the person who's like, I don't think that, you know, I don't like how we, you know, did yeah, well, it, it, it's, it's like, one of those things where again, I don't have a voice. Kind of like 2099 where it's like the, you're judging, you know, you're, you're pointing a finger, but you're failing to recognize the three pointing back at you. Right, um, right. It's like, <laughs> so it's interesting to see how there's even a little tone of that in real life. And you can attribute yeah, that to whatever different, different possibilities of why people react that way. Mm. And, and I'm not saying nobody legitimately believes it or that there's there's always a conversation to be had about different opinions, but but it is interesting to me that that falls right back into the you're not giving him a voice. 
And mm -hmm. really, the whole prescription of let somebody die to save their universe, they're, they're not giving, there's not consent also, usually, right? Necessarily, because mm -hmm. if, if they're not informing him or, you know, they didn't want to tell him. Oh, yeah. They tell yeah him I mean, everybody? they're not telling him, you know, you yeah. can't join the little secret club. You can't do this. You can't do that. And you're like, whoa. And, oh, by the way, we're sitting on the information that you're going to have a tragic, traumatic death in your life mm -hmm. because we assume that you have to, to be a better Spider-Man. And by the way, you're only kind of here. We don't really, you don't really, you don't get a vote because you're not supposed to be here anyway. Uh, well, yeah. and again, and I would, I would argue that, that that can sometimes fit into, again, a larger therapeutic model where it's that idea of, um, you know, in terms of having someone that you are working with in terms of their recovery and whether it's a, you know, a, a physical ailment, a psychological um, ailment, the, the notion of, okay, well, you know, do I barf everything out to them about their diagnosis or what is it that I was, you know, and, and, and again, it can come down to everything from, you know, am I giving this, you know, again, using a physical example, am I giving the, the patient all of the information about the various, we'll say, surgical interventions and recovery time and, you know, percentages and this and that, and how are they going to take it? Like I think of my own cancer treatment and it's like, okay, it's the, there's a, you know, I'll say there's a hundred pieces of information. I know that someone that's just received a cancer diagnosis is probably not going to process all 100 of them. And 87 of them are all things that only come up in super rare occasions. So why would I worry them about that? I'm going to give them these 10 to 13 pieces now, knowing that if something should unfold in a different way, well, then I you know, let these other things go, but I'm not going to just, again, dump all a hundred. And this is, but, and so it's the, that, that role that one has when they are entrusted with information, like that, like, like you say, it goes to consent. It goes to being, you know, informed about, in a sense, the care, the support, the dynamics that you're involved in and, and how often we see in life, the number of times, and especially again, even within family structures, oh, well, we didn't tell you about X. Because we didn't want you to da 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 da, -da. and you're like this hmm. again. <laughs> I get what you think you're doing, but your impact, your intention, and your impact thing, they are not aligning the way you think you do. You you, you, you know you think you're you're accomplishing, and it's also having a more negative impact <laughs> than had you just done the thing. So that withholding is not the you know, and I and again I think about that whether it's everything from. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, what medication therapy and, and possible side effects, um, or again, when pharmaceuticals are provided, but without, again, mm -hmm. other supports. And, and so somebody, you know, again, whether it's a side effect that they have, whether it's um, just, yeah, whatever. The, the, it's like, mm, if you're only, you know, that, that's like me saying, here, I'm going to give you this, this screwdriver that has multiple heads. But I've selectively chosen to take all the Phillips heads out of it. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you, really? <laughs> and that's cool. Why? <laughs> that's not going to really help me with this project as I realize that one third of the screws that I'm dealing with are various sizes of Phillips head. But thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so now I'm going to go strip some screws. I'm going to find myself you know, using a plier to do something and whack myself in the face. But hey, thanks. Thanks for that. You know, <laughs> there's a, you know, there's one thing here that's, I, I'm not really always a big fan of the concept of thinking errors of, for different mm -hmm. reasons. Once again, because it can be kind of blanket. But when you look at this kind of though, there there is a delusion at play, the delusion of prediction. And I think <sighs> this is one of the reasons that blanket decisions and uh, those lack of individualization is, that if you are if you are an expert of any kind in an, in an area, you might be right very often. And human nature is if I am right often, I think I'm right all the time, right? And so there's this prediction which is it is irrational just by just because we really cannot uh, logically we know we cannot predict what's going to happen, but yet. When we do that, when we try to predict what's going to happen, and uh, then there's the real risk that what we're doing is actually working with through our anxiety, our prejudices, yeah. you know, the things that we're like, I'm pretty sure I've seen this happen. And if you adapt that, I mean, I see that all the time with social issues where it's like, well, we can't, what will it, it help if we do fill in the blank? 
we don't know that it'll help. Well, we don't know it won't. Yeah. You know, it, well, it hasn't that well, something like that. And it that goes to that trying before. something new, breaking the cycle. Are you willing right. to take that risk knowing that failure or less than, you know, triumphant success is an option? Or are you willing to, or are you just going to stay with the devil you know and just keep perpetuating? Yeah. And how much of this do you think might be, you know, there's a blindness there, a blind spot to the possibility that a lot of this might just be misery loves company. And hey, we, one of the ways, you know, it, it helps to have, obviously to have a support group of people with empathy who've been through the same things or, or and so to be there and be like, well, you have to, you're not really in the, you're not really in the club. I mean, you know, you're not really one of us in less and, and it feels good, even if I have to exclude someone, it feels good to be on the inside of this club, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and, and and it's interesting because it, it brings up that idea, again, much like the the canon event, right? <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. he wants, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's all, you know, the different, the different, uh, you know, flavor profile of the, the Kool-Aid package, right? You know, it's the, here's the, you know, and, and what's interesting is that I've seen this in a number of places. And, um, you know, I think about a recent experience um, that one of my kids had regarding friend groups. And, and that one of them was, you know, here was this group of kids that he'd know, again, many of them he was tied to through like school and whatever. And then there's obviously, you know, how that group goes off through different jobs or being involved. But it was this group of kids that on one level, they were very progressive in terms of their, um, you know, willingness to discuss mental health. You know, a number of them are neurodivergent. Um, you know, some of them are members of the LGBTQ community. And so there's this, there was this sense of on one level an openness but then at the same time, so in other words, you know, it was like the whole, this is a cool group of friends because they're not like the, you know, the, the, the misogynistic, you know, jocks, da, 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 that are also in my class. But what he came to realize was that it went from being healthy to, no, no, this is like, this was like, there were certain aspects of their identity that just became like literally their entire identity. And it's like, you couldn't, you know we don't just get together and have a, you know, watch a movie. We do this. And then we talk about how it all relates to, and, and sort of taking like, I mean, it's basically taking the kinds of things that you and I do, but then to this weird extreme where you couldn't have any other kind of conversation or that if you weren't talking about processing your trauma this week, you know, <laughs> and, and what little epiphanies you had about your growth. Um, and, and again, sharing those with the group um, that you couldn't, you know, either be a part of this group, nor could you have, friends that were different. And then it was interesting watching again, a different group of friends that he'd met through a different way and, and finding himself having to make, he literally found himself making a choice because this other group was, you know, they care for each other. They talk about different things. They, again, they're a bunch of nerds. They're, there's some, it started through some Ghostbusters D and D and some other like, again, wacky fandom things, but he goes, it's like, it's wild. It's not that we don't talk about these things, but they're not the central part of our conversation. And we do all of these other things and it's well-rounded and da, 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 da. I was like, yeah, this is really it again. So that, and, and I think that's one of the things that we saw was that you get like 2099. It was the whole, I'm invested in, this is my identity. I am a, you know, I am a spider person. I am a da, 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 da. And it's all about this and I've got to control it. And, and nobody's allowed in my club unless they have passed the following things so that I can have this basically this little self-validation bubble. <laughs> and again, one of those like, but dude, so much of the stuff around this is about being, so you just, again, you another example of you've created this parallel thing that is like so identical to the very thing that in a sense you're fighting against. Right. Excellent That's the point. And, 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 yeah, and like, I hadn't thought about it, it that way. Therapeutic groups where you're like, oh God, or different people. But again, I even find it interesting working in this field is about somebody with lived experience where it's the, uh, you know, yeah, you know what? My own boundaries say that I'm going to cut back on social media or maybe not do it at all or do whatever, because there's this weird thing about, well, if you're not doing X, if you're not doing this, if you're not, da, 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 I'm sorry, I have a life and a boundary and this and that. And I'm allowed to, if I'm going to do certain things and do them well, that means I get to keep, and it was, and it was something that again learned in political life. You want me to do this job well, I have to be a well-rounded person, and and I don't have to have you know ninety-eight point nine nine percent of my life, you know, on public view. And and again, if you have a problem with that and say, well, it just comes with the job description, 
that's a you problem, not a me problem. And I'm not here to please you. And I think that, and I think that's again, another place where Hobie really steps up and where other characters, um, you know, struggle with, like we see Gwen struggling with it. We see, you know, where it's, you know, or, 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 or again, we see Peter Parker and family and dragging the baby along that struggle and boundaries, boundaries, you know, <laughs> what are my healthy boundaries? What are my, what are boundaries that I thought were firm for this reason, but they might, oh, wait a second, do I have to readjust? And that's the other part too, boundaries and, and, and things like that. It's about recalibration. This notion of this worked for me and I recovered or, you know, I'm recovering. And so therefore this is now carved in stone. Mm-hmm. Oh, alas, if life was so easy. And like, don't get me wrong. Some things do become deal breakers and carved in stone, especially with certain, you know, Again, dynamics, certain individuals, yep, that person is getting cut off and I don't care what they do. <laughs> I don't care if there's a deathbed apology confession. <laughs> Bye. <Bye-bye. Yeah>. You know, <laughs> you speak I really of, uh... just hit your ass on the way out. <laughs> Whereas there's other folks, you know, and hard. And again, maybe sends you into another universe, but there are other places where you're like, eh, okay, I've got to, you know, reevaluate, recalibrate and do a thing where, okay, what do I do to preserve my sanity, my safety, and still but where I've got growth and function coming into the mix and they might be coming there differently. And then interestingly enough, that actually might be a result of growth. And, and again, so you, you did all the things, you're further down the recovery path. And as a result, you and the world are a little different. So it's not carved in stone. I think of Gwen, speaking of her, as uh, an, uh, her reaction to her trauma is that her natural reaction is empathy and then mm-hmm. but I think the anger and the hurt and the vulnerability becomes such a liability to her especially in the the rift with her father even before <laughs> he finds out and there's there's a real coming out sort of analogy you know with the superhero yeah. thing to parents which yeah. is very interesting with her and Miles right mm-hmm. the the interesting thing is that her go-to and when she joins this organization, she's resisting that empathy. She's fighting against something, right? Yeah. Uh, whereas her natural, and here's the natural Spider-Man thing, you know, is Spider-Man, Spider-Woman thing, which mm-hmm. comes in for her is wanting to save people. What she really wants is to save people and she's being restricted or prohibited from saving certain people, right? Mm-hmm. And that goes against the grain for how she wants to process trauma. And then in the end, I see a self-embracing to where it's like, I can be the kind spider woman. I can be. Again, and goes to that larger, again, the systemic and the shooting and the gatekeeping and the whole, wait a second, everybody keeps telling me I'm not supposed to do the thing. And this is not, mm, again, appreciate the information, but, and, and, you know, on one level, again, sometimes we have to put things in place that uh, frankly make somebody keep them safe from themselves and they don't always appreciate it. And, and, and that's the other part too, is trying to figure out as you're, especially if you're on, if you're the person on the journey, like, I, sorry, I jump out of, you know, seeing things from both sides, right. You know, supporting someone and, 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 and when you're the person being supported because and it's that all like, both really, if you think about it, it. Like yeah. parents, right. It's like the, you know, you, you put the little things in the plug so that, you know, somebody doesn't do what I did at two, which was stick the knife in the electrical socket, you know? Um, so you know, they didn't have those little things back in the day. And right. <laughs> so, yeah, as a parent, I made sure, and a grandparent, boom, 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 we have those things. So how much of it is, you know, something where it's, yes, I'm putting the little plastic thing in the plug so that my, you know, offspring don't, you know, go and jolt themselves into next week. And then how much of it is turning into the, oh my God, I'm helicopter parenting or helicopter, you know, supporting someone. And I've wrapped them in so much bubble wrap that this is not about that they're not going to be able to function in the world because they can't move any of their limbs. They're like the little, they're like the little kid from the, you know, the Christmas movie where they're just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just put your arms. Oh, he can't put his arms down. Yeah, uh, exactly. There's a lot of talk uh, online about this. Uh, and I think sometimes that, the that some people online have missed the point, uh, maybe in my, in my lofty opinion, but <laughs> You know, the the debate or the question, I, I don't know if it's a debate as much, I don't be overly dramatic, of whether or not Gwen may in fact be trans. Because as people have noticed, her outfit has the trans flag colors on it, and mm-hmm. she also has a trans Lives Matter or just trans supportive, love trans kids, I can't remember exactly what it said, yeah. in her room. And her father, 
uh, uh, New York police captain, you know, uh, the police captain, I can't remember his name, but anyway, he has a trans flag pin, lapel pin, right? And so people have noticed those things that have talked about, well, is Gren trans? Is she trans or is she just a trans ally? And to me, the point of that, so far anyway, maybe they'll say, yeah. I don't know. But the point of that is that, uh, you know, why? To me, it doesn't matter so much if you think she is or isn't. Mm-hmm. To me, it's if you think she could or couldn't be. In other words, how strongly do you, it's like, oh, wait, her, my whole conception of her has changed if she is. And that matters yeah. so much. And it's like, that's Which goes back to that larger coming out and her talk yourself. to her father thing, right? Yeah. The whole, like, you know, does it really matter if this person says this to you, revealing this aspect of their identity? And I shouldn't say that matter doesn't and matter, to right? Even judge them because you know if you're responding to somebody coming out as again trans as or revealing their again their mental health profile, whatever it is, the same way you respond to them saying, "Oh, by the way, I'm a serial killer." Yeah. Um, well, then you know, yes, again, and that's what I mean by matter. Too, I mean, I, I'm not, not saying that I you know obviously being trans matters a lot. From an individual being who they are, being exactly. open and all that. What I mean by doesn't matter is like from an outside perspective, if I'm the person who's watching this movie, why do I assume she isn't and why do I need her not to be? You well, know, and, that's well, an interesting. And, what yeah. does that matter? Well, and it was interesting because I saw those things and there was, again, part of me going, this is about being, you know, again, regardless of what the perspective is, this is about the filmmakers include in the same way that they include these art historical nods other um socio-cultural things this is them in in their own way being inclusive and to me that's what matters Mm -hmm. and by it not being prescriptive and definitive it does what again this medium this genre is so good at leaves places for flexibility in interpretation because it First of all, it, it forwards a larger, the broader social, you know, justice agenda of, yes, you know, if you're a toxic fanboy and you have a problem, Wait, with how trans much, people, how well, is clearly that? you're not yeah. a part of our universe because we're not those people. <laughs> right. So right. it's that there again, is... going to larger issues of canon. But then at and the if, same yeah, time, if you think that, that canon events if it don't character, refer to if it that. gives me as a viewer a character to relate to because that may be a possibility, awesome. I prefer the lack of a prescriptive definitive thing because it gives as a creative medium, it gives me a place for creative interpretation of the narrative, which is again, what good stories, good storytelling and good character development do. They're not, you know, weird definitive things that only speak to a a time, a place of this and of that and are frozen in time they allow for that individual relationship and interpretation and possible healing sense of self. Uh, Oh, it's okay to be me, which again, so much of this movie, I mean, the core thing really comes down to it's okay to be who you are. Learn from those around you who may be similar, but to ultimately be who you are and the, the good, the bad, the messy, the whatever that comes with it and are you always going to be able to tell what happens Mm -hmm. do we all have little are we we all trying to invent little algorithms that will tell us what the canon events are in our lives or is society trying to say that there are canon events that say you need to do the following things you need to achieve following academic things you need to achieve the following you know good lord what do you mean you're not married and you know x number of offspring in a house of this side you know the 2.3 kids the dog name spot yada 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 what so that that's I think the like sort of yeah one of those central messages and that factors right into it and I and again in light of all the larger things going on and that toxicity that we're finding in some parts of the fandom that was brilliant because they didn't harp on it and if other and if folks want to speculate hey have at her sure but I just love the fact that it was there because yeah. that was the if this is rubbing you the wrong way then you need to re you need to rethink um, your place in this fandom because. As Stanley has said, the one thing we don't have a place for is that kind of hatred, bias, homophobia, racism, sexism, you know, name it, name a toxic trait. It doesn't belong here. Yes. Okay. So before we wrap up for today, I have a question for you that is non, it's not really clinical in nature. We'll see. But I had to know, because this is, this is a hot topic. 
Yeah, there are a lot, you know, on the on the uh, interwebs as well. How did you feel about the depiction of Ben Riley? Because I know oh, okay. See, you've got a Ben Riley right. thing. I mean, you know, you've got a, a relative uh, who's. Well, I've, I've, I mean, I've got a bias. Right? That's who my that's who my grandson that. is is, yes, is named after, exactly. and so, um, you know, he's watched. He's only two, but I mean. He's oh my god, yeah. Um, people are uh, mad about this. Some people, and some people uh, like it, and some people don't. Right. Well, you see, how I look at it was, I mean, I always want more and richer and fuller, or whatever. But at the same time, it's a case of, as you say, right back at the beginning of this, they covered so many characters, and 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 in ways that gave you a nod. I don't have a problem with it because <laughs> it gave me enough of a nod to who Ben Riley is. But at the same time, it's the whole, this is the, this was the amuse bouche. This was the, you know, the appetizer, the taster. This was the nod. I'm just happy, again, as somebody that is forever struggling to find Ben Riley things for my grandson. Absolutely. Well, the fact that they acknowledge. <laughs> just the fact that he made it in there. Like, the, I yes. would have been, you know, upset if he had merely been relegated to, you know, the proverbial, you know, the background pointing at each other only characters and didn't even have a single line. Sure. As to the An handful- important. Speaking of canon, an important an important part of the whole Spider Man thing because how much the Clone Saga and everything was, but yeah. yet so many people didn't care for it, and ultimately they sort oh. of you know undid it, and uh, you know a lot of so a lot of times well, I was that's just, way too much time on their hands. Them acknowledge it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, you put it this way, and as somebody that has like a weird, clear, and and I'm sure not nor, you know typical um, <laughs> personal investment. Yeah, I also uh, have enough of for as much as we go down these deep holes and this and that <laughs> um, and, and get into that was not the place that I was going to overanalyze or or get myself like that was that was not the rabbit hole that I was willing yeah. to invest in because that would make me the, you know, the unstable grandma. Um, you know? Well, <laughs> and I think. You know, I, I think that on the one side, uh, I get people have a, you know, a lot, a lot of people have an attachment. I always think it's funny when there is a controversial topic, how many people all of a sudden Ben Riley's their favorite character when I haven't heard anybody talk about Ben Riley and Howard Long. Oh, God. But, yeah, yeah. But what is, you and, know, and they're the, all canon experts. For those, but... <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. And for those who don't know, of course, um, some of the complaints out there is that he they felt like it was making fun of the character, that he was too 90s angsty kind of. But who's more 90s angsty than than that storyline and Ben Ra- You know what I mean? If Spider-Man's yeah, like that's, already that's, angsty. That's, again, we've talked about the whole, like, each of the Spideys has their thing. Yeah. And again, like, that's, that's his shtick in the same way that, you know, had they shown Spider-Punk, you know, not looking the way he did. Right. <laughs> And, or you and look, had I mean, him, you know, uh, where where he was in like some sort of suit tie or whatever. And okay, fine, I got a little faux hawk or something, yeah. and two piercings. Um, you know, well, th- 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 that would have been like that's kind of his. That's that's the yeah. era that he's from. That's kind of again what he represents, and again is part of that flip side of of who Spider Man is. And again, when you think about that '90s angsty thing i mean that fits into our our sort of models of whether it's gen x and you know millennials and all these kinds of things and that was so much a product of that era and that 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 angsty thing was reflecting on the the world that you're in who's ahead of you who's behind you how they're dealing with things and yeah so like it it makes sense but again i say that as somebody that you know still loves her my chemical romance and has you know and and can scream emo songs you know at the top of my lungs while driving on the highway with the best of them Uh, i don't see you know and i don't see just having fun with the character as anything insulting i thought it was somewhat well like how many people in the last how many people in the last few years have read spider noir and that was a character that that they poked fun at, you know. Even the bad, everybody loved that character. When he's oh, was, the line where he's like, "I love to to punch Nazis and drink egg creams," you know. I mean, just yeah. and even yet, people <laughs> nobody was, was reading Spider Noir before that. <laughs> I mean, practically, but again, come on. goes to that larger thing, and we saw it go off on a real tangent again with the late, you know, with Love and Thunder, and again with. Um, you know, with she health of course, you know, for some reason, there's no issue with the Deadpool, but it's that notion that, that like, again, if it, one of the things that's so wonderful about these characters and these universes is that while there are certain fantastical elements, again, the superpowers, the other, again, these other different things, what is, what makes for good, 
you know, and why these, these characters are so close to us is their relatableness and that full spectrum of human emotions that they have. And, and, and again, that kind of, again, that nineties angsty thing, well, welcome to flipping anxiety brain. Um, and, 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 and either late, you know, and, and late, late teenage, um, you know, early adulthood, like that's like that in a sense, it's always been there within, I mean, it, yeah. there's elements of it, you know, in Peter, in my, it, Ben is just, and again, that, that idea of, you know, in terms of the clone, well, and then not realizing that he's the clone, of course, that's going to bring like that extra level of, you know, self-awareness, but also the self-doubt, the angst, the, like, welcome to like, just, you know, turning up the heat on, on the overthinking and, you know, on a scale of one to 10, bringing it to 15. Um, you know? <laughs> so to me, that kind of the, the humor and the self-deprecating thing is, is kind of part of the package. And I would even argue for those of us with, you know, regardless of what the diagnosis is, but especially with anxiety, a lot of times how we we manage it is that again is humor i mean good lord how much i mean think about the number of performers that have anxiety disorders and it's the performative aspect is you know the being on stage that should make you nervous is actually the way of masking coping etc and and same thing with comedians where how much of their humor is self deprecating because it's a way of in a sense and and and, and that again that 90s emo thing is in a sense a way of processing reflecting on and and in some cases you know managing how we see ourselves and how other people see us and that sometimes it's you know playing that kind of a character or doing that things a particular way gives us a space where as awkward as it might be gives us a place to function in that time and place so yeah so no i i didn't have any problems with it. And, and I do think again, in light of who's been cast in these different roles, what they bring to them. I mean, you know, I think the fact that, you know, Andy Samberg would not be, you know, on one level, not my first, you know, Mr. Lonely Island, not my first uh, thought of a Spider-Man. And at the same time, yeah. Casting him as Ben Riley to have that angle. Like that's, that's where dude lives kind of thing. Like he's, he, he can do that, that, that nineties and early knots kind of thing and, and, and play into that. So yeah, I think he had a really wonderful distilled way of bringing that so that, yeah, I only have a handful of lines and this is what I'm bringing to the table. Like I said, so that's why I didn't have an issue with it. Um, and, and that's, I think that's another part that I would really like to say that in terms of this movie, especially in light of what we've known of casting and canons and, and, and how, that's grown and changed and how that's <laughs> triggered some trolls for lack of a better way of putting it in the, you know, um, if you look at this cast and again, I get it that, you know, we're seeing them mostly in either in red and blue masks or, you know, but you, you look at who was cast. We have got like a wonderful diversity, both in the characters and in the casting. And I mean, you know, that idea of like Issa Rae and, oh my God, there's a pregnant, <laughs> There's a yes. pregnant spider mom, um, you know, <laughs> the geek girl, like, you know, the kid, the, the person that's raised her kids, you know, yeah. again, Spider-Man is the gateway. Um, <laughs> like that was awesome. Yeah. And that she's again, there on a motorcycle. So again, I had a personal in light of, you know, oh, that's right. <laughs> like oh, motorcycles, um, you know, so there are those kinds of things or putting in like Donald Glover and, and all of the, you know, there were just so many nods to, you know, um, diversity. I mean, you know, again, I have a love for Greta Lee. So to have her in there, even as Lila, like there was just, there was so much there that shows honestly the, again, for all the folks that think that comics and superheroes aren't about like, you know, social justice and, 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 and in a sense, bringing society forward, um, and into growth and and understanding different perspectives and you know all the all those things that were apparently not to me this movie has like reams of evidence you know that that shoots that down in spades and says well no actually and so yeah like so that, that was the other part and I mean there's a there's a whole other notion of of you know representation and that's everything from this kind of casting to again the chai tea and 
Absolutely. in, you know, bringing in India and all those, those other kinds of, of things where it's like, yeah, this was not the same thing as hold it in comparison just to like the very first Tobey Maguire movie. Absolutely. Which again, nothing wrong with that movie, no, no, but no, you but the growth and evolution. It probably got us here yes. sort of in a way, but yes, that evolution. Well, yeah. tell everybody, uh, is there anything going on at uh, Speak Up? Dot uh, doing some re <laughs> again, <laughs> my, my, my continual, oh yeah, stuff's, you know, I, I'm changing stuff on the back end of the website. I swear to God, the web, the web, uh, you know. Spidey has like his doc ox and, 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 you know, his standard, I've come to the conclusion websites and tech are, are my, you know, super villain, my nemesis. <laughs> and, and, you know, in the same way that, you know, Norman Oz will, will, will continually show up, you know, in, in Peter's life. Maybe even um, a venom web, a little bit where there's a love hate. <laughs> yeah. Can, can, they will continually drop little goblin bombs in my world. So um, nope, still doing some stuff, you know, again, just, Again, what I'm really excited about is, and again, goes to that constant revision thing. Yeah, there's going to be some, I'm adding some components related to the Spider-Verse because Very while cool. the initial brought a lot to the equation, this opens up doors. And especially, I would say that those larger discussions about where the the sources of of trauma come from and where trauma as it relates to social injustice, microaggressions, and other societal things that this, the Spider-Verse gives us a lot of opportunity to talk about the impact of broader society and broader systems. Excellent. So, yep. Yeah, Very cool. <laughs> there's a new module coming. There's a, you speak, know, <laughs> speak long way around to the uh, home. Yeah, it's speak-up.co for anybody yeah. out there, as we've talked about it before, but I always like to put it in there. One quick announcement for everybody and thank you uh, once again, everybody, for listening and being out there. But one quick announcement is that there is – it's a, a second year running a tr tradition that I uh, got started last year. It's a tradition if I do it this year, right? So <laughs> it, it's going to be August 31st doing a long-form uh, – a uh, live show. It's International Overdose Awareness Day. Ongoing, uh, we mentioned a lot on the show, and I'm involved with the production of some other uh, podcasts in the industry where we talk a lot about uh, both both overdose and what I actually call poisoning, which is a lot mm -hmm. of the the problem we see with fentanyl and those things. So it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be something that sh should bring a lot of awareness, hopefully, too. As last year, we plugged a bunch of different uh, nonprofit agencies and treatment uh, things that are out there. That'll be part of it again, but also some different segments that are going to be a few pre recorded, but mostly live for a chunk of, of a few hours in that day. So pay attention uh, here. I'll, I'll try to bring it up here on the show, but also on the, the socials, which Frankly, I'm not always good at updating every episode and everything, but there will be, uh, especially as it comes closer within. I use StreamYard, which doesn't let you give a link much farther than a week or two before. So there will be announcements and a link that you can join. One of the things I like to do that, that, that I did last time was uh, literally the link that I will put up. There'll be a link to watch, but also a link to join that anybody is welcome to log on and you know be part of it if they'd like to just be prepared you know you'll get into the the live broadcast if you anybody who'd want to and we're going to have uh you know uh former and returning uh guests who are on a lot you can come on if you want Sharon. we can talk about that i was time. i was hoping to be there last year and you know <laughs> yeah, the world yeah. Balls. so right. uh so, fingers yeah. crossed that uh <laughs> yeah we'll find we'll find a way to factor is lower in. that 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 day <laughs> this year yes yes exactly so so yeah, some of which we don't know till the day of, and then some of which, uh, like I say, were scheduled segments as well. So uh, lot, there'll be some different things this year uh, as well for those that tuned in last time. A lot of that will show up on the feed, but not all of it, and you won't have the excitement of it being live. <laughs> so, all right, thank you everybody for listening. Also, make sure to log on to uh, or or go to anyway uh, Patreon dot com slash Broken Brain. You can also, once again, the socials are facebook.com slash breakabrain is one word. Twitter, it's at breakabrain. And Instagram, at brainiacsahoy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon.
Thank you for listening to the Court and Parts Podcast Network. To listen to more Court and Parts shows, visit courtemparts.com.